Okay, so we are fixing that 06 911 Carrera 4S 3.8 liter, and the engine is in the machine shop down here at Motor Works in National City. Let's go check it out. So they do all kinds of machine work here. Look at all these engines apart, cylinder heads, Volkswagen cases. And here is the engine. Mike over here is the machinist. And how long have you been machining, Mike? I've been here 45 years. Who did you learn all your machining from? Well, basically just on the job. You know, Sergio taught me a little bit. Uh, his brother Edward was very helpful and stuff. But, uh, just on the job training. So we got Cisco here and he is the manager of MotorWorks. And how long have you been working here for Cisco? 18 to 20 years so far. Cisco's been doing this for 20 years. Mike's been doing it for 45 years. So I think we picked the right shop to rebuild the engine on this car. And here is the engine taken apart here. Uh, here's our cylinder six. You've got a pretty good gouge happening right here. And up on the top of the cylinder, it's actually really, really bad. So it definitely does not pass the fingernail test. Uh, lots and lots of gouges. We'll move on to cylinder five right here. Um, it's okay, but it's still, you know, it's, it's still pretty heavily gouged. Cylinder three is just okay. Uh, you can see the scoring, but you can't really feel the scoring. Uh, same with cylinder two. You can see the scoring, but you can't feel the scoring. So now we're gonna rotate the crankshaft and we're gonna inspect cylinder one and cylinder four. Starting over here on our bad side, Definitely has an issue there. Cylinder one looks the nicest and feels the nicest. They all have a little bit of scoring. Cylinder one looks the best. Cylinder six is the worst. Then cylinder five, then cylinder four. Uh, three is just like kind of okay. It wasn't really probably causing any problems. And then same thing with two and one, they were just okay. This engine was using lots of oil. It also had a loud ticking noise. It sounds like a lifter ticking. We'll find this out a little bit later after we have the uh, engine case and the engine block split open. That is most likely the piston slapping inside the cylinder bore. So, so when you say we're going to take the case apart, we're yeah, going to, so we're going to split this line right here. Yeah, basically this okay. comes off. There's like a, well, you can see in here, see this right here? This is the basket uh -huh. that the crank is encased in. Okay. Perfect. So there's like a case inside a case. Exactly. Okay. And then uh, the pistons and everything are attached to the crankshaft. You know, basically, I, I call this a clamshell. The heads and everything thread in to this inner piece. So this is actually the strength the strong part of the case. Okay, so the head bolts are like yeah, the head way bolts, in the here. The head bolts are real long. You can see them right there. So here's there our head bolts. They're, they're almost like springs. They yep. actually only thread in about a half an inch. Way down there at the bottom. Yeah, that's that's. And then this is there. this thread used for like the stretch? That's actually for the stretching. Yeah. Wow. And they and they're fairly reusable. I've never had to replace them. Oh wow. You know, I just check the lengths on them as long as they're all the same length. They, there's uh, there's no problem with reusing them. This is basically just kind of like a. a an outer shell that encases the water jackets, has the cylinders in it. Okay, cool. So you, you're going to get this completely separated. Exactly. The crankshaft's going to be yeah, pulled at out. At this point now, I'll take it off the stand, separate this, and then uh, there's six rod and pistons. One side just pops off the bottom, and uh, you take the rods and pistons out. Okay. And then you split the other piece in here and take the crankshaft out. To get rid of this bore scoring, we're going to press basically a new cylinder inside here. Yeah, it's going to get a new cylinder. So it's going to get a new bore. This is the cylinder, and then this is the piston that fits inside cylinder six. Uh, you can see the left side of piston six is really, really gouged. On the other side of that, which we don't have a picture of right now, but on the other side of that, uh, the, the piston skirt is actually pretty good. Piston four is also bad, it's, but it's not bad as piston number six. This is definitely what's causing the cylinder six misfire is that the piston has just too much friction within the cylinder and it's causing a slowing of the crankshaft rotation on the cylinder six firing. So let's start fixing this right now. We're doing the process of the boring procedure right now. Mike is. This 
tool is going to be overbore the cylinder. And when the cylinder gets overboard, each cylinder bore will have a total of five passes. 50 thou to pass, and then we like 230 thou total. So this is the final cut on this cylinder. Um, he's taking 25 thousandths off. That machine is rotating 300 revolutions per minute. And each revolution, the machine goes down three thousandths of an inch. So not very far, uh, but it's moving at 300. So it's just taking a nice slow cut. This cylinder now is totally done being bored and the deck height being lowered to receive the flange. Now we're gonna move on to this one so you can see the difference of how much we pulled off of here from there to there. And then all the, the other two will have the same exact uh, machining. The final cut is the final uh, diameter of the bore size. And then the flange cut cuts that top quarter inch of the cylinder off. The vehicle owner, Michael, just came down and he's checking out his the process of getting this engine machined. This is piston six. So you can see how bad and roughed up this edge is. There's two ways that you could that you could push this push this cylinder into that hole. Uh, you could you could put it into a, into a press, and like you said, there's a two and a half to three thousandths interference. So this is bigger by three thousandths. So if you were to push this in with that hole being three thousandths of an inch smaller, it takes a lot of force. And then what can happen is all these edges can gall the aluminum on the engine block. And you don't want that because then you create a sloppier fit. So he's, ha he's hand feeding the boring bar down right now. That's what he's doing with his right hand. You can just hear it start to touch right there. So that just opens the top. Yeah, it just takes that sharp edge off the top. It helps the sleeve enter and, and drop down. The other process is you can heat the engine block and then you make the engine block eight to ten thousandths of an inch larger. Uh, so this is at 165 centigrade. You can kind of smell it in the air, what's happening. So it's 400 degrees, almost 400 Celsius. So right now the entire engine block is our 10 thousandths larger in diameter. Oh, beautiful, wow. Just goes right in. Done. So that engine, goes quick. that engine is sleeved right so now. now gonna, it's hot. You, yeah, it's you very can hot. feel the heat coming off of this thing, wow. like a little campfire happening. Now the engine is going to cool down. This side of the block is going to cool down. So as as this thing shrinks, it's actually going to it's trying to squeeze the cylinder out of the cylinder block, and he'll reseat it. Because if he doesn't reseat it, like what he said, after the engine gets warmed up. The sleeve, will, the drop sleeve will drop. It'll drop away from the head gasket, and you got you got all kinds of failures. You have loss of compression. You have coolant loss. You have oil loss. You have everything lost. The car runs like crap. Not and, to mention my pride's hurt. Yeah, <laughs> Mike's pride's hurt. The uh, so he's that's that's why we pick people that have been doing it for like 45 years, right? Mike's been doing it for 45 years. He doesn't screw this kind of stuff up. Right?